Erstedt's discovery in 1820 that a magnetic field circles of current bearing wire led to many inventions but also led to the question if charge in motion, which is electric current, produces magnetism, can magnetism be used to produce charge in motion, electric current? Can magnetism create electric current or electricity? Well, in 1831, Michael Faraday wrapped two insulated coils of wire around an iron ring and found that upon passing a current through one coil, a momentary current was induced in the other coil. This phenomenon is known as mutual or electromagnetic induction. So here I have equipment that will replicate Faraday's discovery. I've got an iron ring and around this iron ring is one coil of wire and this coil of wire is connected to my battery, goes back to the switch and around to the other coil of wire. So these two wires go to the battery. This other wire is coiled around the ring. It is not connected to the wire with the battery. This wire is simply connected to a sensitive microammeter. So we need a sensitive current detection device connected to this wire. And what you'll notice is the needle is not moving. There is no current flowing through this wire. Now, if we connected this wire to a battery, and turned it on, we would expect that needle to move. But it's not connected to anything, so we really don't expect it to move. However, when I close the switch and run current through this other wire, there's a magnetic field that builds up around this wire. Current bearing wire creates a magnetic field. That magnetic field will temporarily magnetize this iron ring. And as that iron ring becomes magnetized, it will induce current in this other wire. So when I close the switch, watch the needle. I close it, it deflected to the right, and then it went back to nothing. But watch what happens when I open the switch and turn the current off. It deflected to the left. So the current is only induced in the other coil of wire when the magnetic field is first turned on and then when it's first turned off. Faraday figured out this meant that the magnetic field has to be in motion, moving, to generate the current in the other wire. So when we first close the switch, the magnetic field is building up, it's expanding outward, and that creates the current in the wire, but then once it's built up, it's not in motion anymore, that current stops. When I open the switch, the magnetic field collapses. That's another moving magnetic field and the current is induced in the other wire. The needle deflects opposite directions for when the magnetic field is turned on, built up, and when it's turned off, collapses. That means that the magnetic field traveling one direction creates current in one way and traveling the opposite direction creates current in the opposite way. If I continually turn this on and off, we can see the current continually keeps switching directions. We call this alternating current. So all we have to do to generate alternating current is have a magnetic field that continually switches directions. So another thing to notice about how the current direction depends on the direction of the magnetic field is that when I close it, it goes to the right, open it goes to the left. If I reverse, if I reverse the direction of the current, I'm going to switch these two wires and make the current go in the opposite direction. So now the current is going to flow in the opposite direction. So now when I close the switch, the needle deflected to the left, and when I opened it, it deflected to the right. So this tells us that not only is the direction of the magnetic field movement important, but also the north-south polarity of the magnetic field 
is important. Reversing the magnetic field reverses the current direction.